Guten Tag, Damen und Herren und Kinder. Ich heiße Johannes Kranich. I am Johannes Kranich. You call me Johannes. Um, I am, by mm, most recent profession, a glassknecht. I'm a mercenary with the Holy Roman Empire. Um, previously, I have been many other things. I have been baker. I have been Jackalston. I have done lots of different things, but I have found the most successful thing I have been at is being a Lance Connect mercenary. I have been with not one, not two, but three Thane lines. Successfully survived. Um, I haven't even been provost one time. I'm not sure how I got it. Pretty sure I know how I lost it. Anyway, so here I am today I'm going to tell you a story. Stories are for everyone, not just for kinder, at least here for me in the 16th century. So, this is a story that is often told to kinder. This is one I learned as I'm kinder. Um, but it is something we could probably tell to just about anyone. There's not too much bad things in here. Um, sometimes this story is called The Brave Little Tailor. Sometimes it's called Seven with Bun One Blow. Um, the story starts out with The Brave Little Tailor. And the tailor is in his tailor shop, and he is sewing. And he is watching a parade of people go by. He's enjoying his day. His window is open. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. He decides that he wants to have a little jam on bread. He gets out the bread, slices a piece off, lays it down. When he goes and he gets his jam, spreads it on top of the, of the, of the bread. He goes to put everything away, and what happens? He comes back and there are flies, seven of them, flying around his bread. He says, I'll get rid of those. He finds a piece of cloth, and he just waits, and he waits for just the right time. Whap! He whips the cloth, and he kills seven flies, all seven of them. This one shot. He's very proud of his achievement. He is so proud of his achievement. What he does is he makes himself a doublet. When he embroiders on it, seven mit one blow. Seems a bit of excessive, but that's what he does. Well, after all this excitement, he wants to go out and he wants to show people, advertise how wonderful he is. And so he goes for a walk. Before he leaves with him, goes with this leaves, he takes with him a, a, a big piece of soft cheese and some more bread. And he puts him in a little in, a, in, a, in, a, in some cloth, he wraps it up, he takes it over his shoulder. So he goes on his walk. And while he is out walking in the countryside, goes to the town, countryside, he gets out there and there is a giant. Now he sees this giant. He's feeling very proud of himself and he wants to show off. So he walks up to the giant and he says, Oh, hello there, big fellow. How are you today? He says, and he stands sort of in a way to say, Look at my doublet and my fancy, my embroidery. The giant looks down at the puny at the little man because this is a giant. He looks down and he is very, very, hmm, looking down at him, not just literally, but figuratively. He looks down on him. He says, who are you? And he says, well, he says, I am the man who killed seven with one blow. The tailor is boasting. And the giant thinks to this and he says, hmm, he goes, this might not be, might be someone to be concerned about. He says, but he might also be lying. So I put him to strength test. He says, we would have a test, he says to him. He goes, if you can do... And if you can do what I can do, then I will let you live. And he picks up a stone from the ground, the giant does, and he squeezes it with his hand until water drips out of it. And the tailor, who is suitably impressed at this point, is like, oh no, I might be in trouble. But he's fast thinking. He says, "You, I, I can match that." He says, and he reaches and he pulls out of this 
bag. He pulls out a cheese, his soft cheese, his soft cheese. He holds it out, and the giant doesn't know any difference. I mean, he's very small compared with the giant, so the giant can't necessarily see everything he's doing. He picks the cheese and he squeezes it, and thankfully it is a soft cheese with a lot of um, um, whey in it, and squeezes it so until the whey drops out of the cheese. And the giant says, oh, well done. And the tailor saves his own life. Pardon the bone. It is my clock. So, the tailor saves his own life. He parts ways with the giant. Goes away. He walks around the countryside some more. He's gone for a very long walk. He is tired. He lays down to take a nap. While he is napping, and he... Someone comes across him, a shepherd, with his flock, and he sees the man on the ground, and he sees seven mid blow. He's not sure exactly what it means, but he's pretty afraid that it might mean that he can kill seven men with fun strike. So he goes, and he goes to town, and he talks to a, a, a guard, who talks to the constable, who talks to, a, goes to the palace, And they hear about this man, so the king sends guards to come and investigate. And so when the tailor wakes up from his nap, he is surrounded, surrounded by guards. He says, hello. He says, what can I do with you? Do for you. And they tell him that the king wishes to speak with him. So they lead him back under heavy guard back to the castle. Again, he's got a doublet, it's a seven with one blow. The king says, tell me, he says, is it true that you killed seven with one blow? The tailor says, it is indeed true. The king is thinking, because maybe, maybe I can use this to my advantage. This man is probably dangerous. So, I give him hard task. Maybe, if we are lucky, we'll solve one problem. I will send him away. If he goes away, does, comes back, he has solved one of our problems in the kingdom. If he doesn't come back, I have solved one of the other problems in the kingdom, which is this man is probably dangerous. We get rid of him. He says, I would like you to go off into the forest or fight. Uh, we have a uh, Two giants, you need to fight them. The tailor is not confirmed. He just dealt with a giant already. You need to kill these giants. And in return, I will give you the hand of the princess. Hmm, the tailor says. All right. Now the king offers to send him men to help him with the giants. He refuses it. He says, I go alone. So there we are. The tailor goes alone. They are like, he's crazy. He's gonna die. But he goes alone. He goes out into the woods where he finds the giants. They are twice as big as the first giant that he met. And they each only have one big eye in the middle of their forehead. So he's Cyclops. Now, he waits until they are asleep and he waits off to the side and he climbs up up into the tree over which over top of where they are sleeping when he drops a rock on their head on the, on the head of one of the giants now this giant wakes up he looks around with his one eye and he's kind of confused and closes his eye again goes to sleep. Now a little bit later, he does it again and drops a bigger rock this time. Giant opens up and he goes, looks over and only one here with him is his body over to the side. So, he says, hey, he says, he shoves him, he says, hey, stop that. Now the giant's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, you, you hit me. He says, I didn't hit you. Well, somebody did, says the first giant when he rolls back over again. 
So, what happens then is they go back to sleep. Only then, uh, they goes back to sleep. So he waits for a little bit till everybody is asleep, and then he drops a rock on the other giant. So that giant wakes up, and he says, "Hey, you just why are you hitting me?" And this first giant, who is just sleeping innocently by himself, says, I didn't do anything. And he goes, you most certainly did. And he says, shut up and go back to sleep. And everybody goes back to sleep. And he drops more rocks on, this, on the first giant again. And this turns into a big fight. The, both the giants are mad. They don't know what's going on, but they think that they are being attacked by their friend. And they fight and fight until they are both dead. Well, once everything has settled, the tailor climbs down out of the tree. He walks up with a sword that he has, and he stabs and slashes at the bodies a little bit to make it look like they were in some uh, a fight. And you know, he makes himself a little bit dirty and a little bit of blood here and there. And he goes back to the king and he says, I have completed my task. You must now give me the hand of the princess well the king really was hoping that the tailor would just get killed in the process so he's like um wait wait i have one more task for you he says i need you to go into the forest and you need to capture the unicorn it's very dangerous though he says you have to go and capture the unicorn. He's known. Uh, takes his horn when he stabs people with it. That's how he kills people. He goes, if you are not holy, would 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 not kill virgins. Or the terror says, all right. He says, well, I can do this. And again, the king offers to send him help. He offers to give him a, a, a virgin that he can use to lord a unicorn in. Taylor says, no, no. I got this. So he goes back out again into the woods. Different place. And he gets to a location where it is known that the unicorn has been seen. But while he's out there, he does indeed come across the unicorn. And much as he has been explained to him, the unicorn attempts to kill him by charging at him and stabbing him with the horn. The tailor drops to the ground at the last minute, hands over his head, curls up in a boulder. You go to corn sails right across him, and and with his head down, and runs right into a tree, and the horn just digs right into the tree. And he's stuck. Can't get out. The tailor takes this opportunity to take a rope, and he wraps it around the unicorn like a bridle. Hmm? And he and 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 and, and he, um, he has him uh, secured and ties the rope to the bottom of the tree, and then he cuts out the tree down and gets the unicorn's horn out of the tree, um, and and he rides the unicorn with the rope as the reins back to the to the king, and he says, "Here we are. I have I have captured this unicorn. Now I want to marry your daughter." The king says, wait, wait, I have one more task for you. Just one more. The king is positive he has to get this one. Mess this one up because he really doesn't want to give his daughter away to this stranger. Also, he's hoping that one of these tests will kill the man. He says, in the woods, there's a boar. It's the size of a cow. And it kills people. Many people have tried to hunt him. Many, many big hunting parties have been out there to get him. No one has ever succeeded. He always kills everyone that tries to get him. And he says, well, where do I go? He says, there is a abandoned chapel in the woods. He tells him where to get there. He goes, and, and that is where it is often that he is seen. Again, the king offers the tailor help, 
and again the tailor refuses. So the tailor goes out to where the, the, the chapel is and he is sitting there waiting. He's eating apple. Eating apple. He's kind of bored when the, when the boar appears. He's staring at him across the clearing for the chapel is. And he's sitting there. And he's not sure what to do. Because there is the boar and it is immense. You could ride the boar home like the unicorn. There it is. It's waiting. They are facing each other, looking at each other, staring each other down. And the bell boar charges full speed right at the tail. Right there coming after him. Well, the tailor has got nowhere to go. He runs back into the church. He gets into the church and he's looking around. He says, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? How am I going to get out of here? He sees that there are the windows. He thinks, I just, he runs over and he, he jumps out of the window. Now well, the boar follows him into the church. He's running around trying to find him. The boar cannot get out the window. The window is, is just too small and too high. In the meantime, the tailor runs around to the back of the front of the church. He closes the door and blocks it up and makes it so that. And the boar's running around inside and he's like, and, and can't get out. Um, so the tailor goes back to the, the king and tells him that the boar's trapped in there. And the men come down to where the boar is in the chapel and they, and they come and they build fires around it and they burn the whole thing down. And killed the boar in the process. Um, in the mean, while they are doing this, um, the tailor even makes a friend of um, one of the page boys. He says, "You know, it's very, um, very wonderful to meet you. You are such a hero. You are such a brave man. I am so happy to know that there is a man like you in the kingdom here to save us from all these terrible things." Well, the king has come up with everything that he can. And now he has to pay out. So there is the wedding. And the brave little tailor, who nobody really knows, is a tailor. Just know him as this man who has defeated all these monsters. He's a monster killer, really. Monster, monster defeater. Um, and they are and the, the princess is very excited. The king is not so excited, but the princess is very excited. She's brave, brave hero that she's going to marry. And they get married, and that night. When they are sleeping in the wedding bed, the tailor talks in his sleep. And he says, oh, I need to I need to make another doublet. Oh, five more pairs of hosen. Oh, the duke needs new buttons on his, on his doublet. Silver buttons and buckles. And and I've got to sew that up. Oh, and there's a hole in this. And, and he's talking in his sleep, and, and the princess is listening to him, and she realizes that this man isn't some knight or some lord. And this man is a tailor. This man, this person she just married, is just a humble tailor, and he has nothing. He's just a tailor, and she is embarrassed and very angry. In the morning, when they get up, when they're awake, and the Princess goes to talk to her father when she says, Oh, about this man is just a tailor. He is nobody. She finds out and he tells her father. And she says, Tonight, he says, we will get rid of him. When we go to bed, when you go to bed, I will have men. They will be waiting in the hall. Once you fall asleep, uh, you, you come out. And tell the men, and they will come in, and they will kill the tailor. Well, this might have worked, but the page boy was nearby, and he warns the tailor about what is going to happen. So at night, after everybody goes to sleep, he waits he pretends to fall asleep the princess gets up she goes out into the hall she tells the men that it is time for them to go in and the tailor rolls over 
and pretends to be talking, and he says, Whoa, he says, I have killed giants, and I have defeated the unicorn, and I have killed the the boar, and I killed seven men with one blow. Nobody had better try and cross me, or they will die. And well, that was enough to put the fear of God into these men, who were just getting ready to come in and ambush him. And so they fled, and they would not do it. And the king could not convince any other men to try to go after the tailor to kill him. And so he lived with the princess as his wife, eventually becoming the ruler of the land, and he, at least, lived happily ever after. The end. Thank you very much for coming here for the story. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you didn't mind all the little extraneous things. I have a beautiful clock. I have a small white dog that runs around and makes lots of noise sometimes. But this is exactly how you might be hearing a story hmm? in that time. Someone would tell you a story. You'd be sitting around a campfire. There would be noises. There would be distractions. So here we are. Thank you again. I hope to um, have you come back again to hear more stories. Uh, some of them, as I said, I will know by heart and I will just tell them to you more casually. Other ones I might have to read. There are so many stories out there and I would love to share them with all of you. So, until next time, choose.